Sketches are created as a base geometry from which solid bodies may be extruded. You may begin to sketch by clicking the sketch icon or by going to the insert menu and choosing sketch. To begin sketching, you'll first need to specify a sketch plane. You can do this either by selecting the face of a pre-existing object or datum plane or by using the tools given in the toolbar. These options include the option to sketch in place or on a path, the option to select a set of coordinate axes which will define the sketch plane, or the option to create a new datum plane or construct a new coordinate system. It is a good idea to name your sketch in the upper left hand corner so that it is easier to identify when editing later on. Once the sketch plane is determined, you may begin creating sketch entities. Sketch lines and arcs can be made with two different commands. The first command is Profile, which creates a continuous string of entities. The second option is to simply choose the line or arc icons, which will create a single entity not automatically strung together. When creating your sketch entities, you may specify the location of points in X and Y coordinates by entering values in the displayed box by entering parameters for length and angles or by simply clicking on a point on the screen. You can also create circles and fillets by choosing the corresponding icons on the menu bar. Rectangles may be drawn by three methods. The first method allows you to select two points which specify opposite corners of the rectangle. The second option allows input of three points. For this option, you must first select two points to specify the length and location of the base, and then specify a height of the rectangle with the third point. The third option is labeled from center. For this option, the first point selected specifies the center of the rectangle. The second point then specifies half the length of the base, while the other half is mirrored across the center point. The third point you select will specify half the height of the rectangle and the other half will be mirrored across the center line created by points 1 and 2. In sketch mode, you can also create derived lines, which are lines created using pre-existing entities as references. For example, if you select two existing lines, a bisector will be created between them, which bisects the angle between the two lines you may specify the length of this line. Also, if you select one line, a copy will be made of the same length that can be moved parallel to the original line. There are several other ways to create curves. These include the offset command, which allows you to choose a sketch entity or set of entities and create a copy at a specified distance from the original. If you choose a set of entities, the copy will be a scaled version of the original either larger or smaller, depending on the direction chosen. Another option is the mirror command, which will mirror a sketch entity or set of entities across a dis designated center line. You may also create new sketch entities from existing curves. In order to add curves, your project must include previously created non-associative curves. These are curves created by the basic curves command. If you select these curves to add to the sketch, the curves are then transformed into sketch entities belonging to the current sketch. This command is useful since there is no command for creating regular polygons in the sketch function. In the sketch function, trimming and extending have their own separate commands, which are called quick trim and quick extend. Quick trim only removes and cuts curves. The curve to be cut will be highlighted as you pass the cursor over it. 
When extending, a preview of the extension will be shown before you select it. Sketch arcs maintain their initial radius and are extended along their circumference until they intersect another entity. If sketch curves do not have a physical entity to extend to, they will not be selectable. In both the Quick Trim and Quick Extend commands, you can click and hold the left mouse button to draw a line through multiple objects, which will all receive the command simultaneously. The sketch function also allows creation of reference lines by selecting a sketch line, right-clicking, and selecting Convert to or from Reference. This line can then be used to dimension or anchor from when constraining the sketch without actually being a part of the sketch geometry. Reference lines appear as dashed lines on the screen. When you create a sketch, which will eventually be extruded into a solid body, you must fully specify the shape, size, and location of the sketch with constraints. Each point has two degrees of freedom, which are its x and y coordinate positions. All existing degrees of freedom must be specified to fully constrain a sketch. Lines have two endpoints, and thus four degrees of freedom. Arcs and circles have an additional degree of freedom, as the radius must be specified in addition to their x and y coordinates. When constraining a sketch by the Insert Dimension, or Insert Constraint Commands, orange degree of freedom markers appear on the sketch. These markers show the degrees of freedom which are yet undefined. The direction they point indicates the direction in which the point they are located on is still free to move. In these modes, the number of constraints still needed to fully specify the sketch will also appear on the upper right-hand status bar. When creating a sketch, you may use the automatic snaps to create sketch entities. These appear as dotted orange lines. When you create an entity with an automatic snap, this constraint will also be applied to the sketch automatically. This should be kept in mind as you construct your sketch, as the snaps may introduce constraints that you do not necessarily want in your sketch. You may also go to the sketch preferences to change the snap angle. A lower angle will reduce the amount of the snap. You can remove constraints by choosing the Show Remove Constraints option from the Tools menu. This box will display all current geometric constraints, both those explicitly defined by the user as well as those implicitly created by the automatic snap. Highlighting a constraint will cause the entities affected to be highlighted in orange on the screen. From here you have the option to remove these constraints. To remove remaining degrees of freedom, there are two different categories of constraints. These are geometric constraints and dimensional constraints. Within each of these categories are several different ways to constrain parts of your sketch. We will start with dimensional constraints. Dimensional constraints allow you to input a dimension value to constrain the size of a sketch entity. This includes several options. Horizontal and vertical constraints specify the length in the x and y directions respectively. The parallel constraint specifies the length of the line with respect to its current orientation in the sketch plane. The perpendicular constraint specifies the perpendicular distance between a selected line and a point selected on a reference line or curve. The angular constraint specifies the angle between the intersection or proje projected intersection of two lines. Diameter and radius constraints specify the size of a circle or arc. The perimeter constraint specifies the cumulative length of selected curves, whether they are connected to each other or not. When creating dimensions, you must be careful when choosing the points you dimension from. For example, you may choose to reference the location of a line endpoint either to an arc's midpoint 
or from a point tangent on the curve, depending on where you pick on the curve. Once dimensions are created, they can be moved around the screen for easier viewing by clicking and dragging. You can also change the text height in the sketch preferences. Dimensions may also be named. Descriptive names make dimensions easier to edit. You may then define a dimension either by entering a number in the dimension box or clicking the arrow in the box for more options. A useful tool is the expression editor found by choosing the formula option. The expression editor may also be accessed outside of the sketch function under tools in the top toolbar. From here you can edit all dimensions. A filter is provided at the top of the dialog box which allows you to filter the dimensions available for editing. You may choose to reference one dimension from another or enter formulas for the dimension. This is where descriptive names become useful. Note that if you reference a dimension in the expression and later change the first dimension, the second dim dimension will automatically update. To return to a sketch, you may simply double click on the sketch or choose the sketch icon and navigate back to your sketch. Dimensions can be deleted by simply right clicking and choosing delete. By going to the animate dimensions button you can animate a chosen dimension. You can set a lower limit, upper, upper limit, and cycle and watch the dimension move. By doing this, you can see if the curves that it is connected to are constrained correctly by the way they move in response to the animated dimension. Reference dimensions can be created as well, which can be referred to by another entity without actually constraining the object with the reference dimension. This can be done by right-clicking on a dimension and selecting Convert to or from Reference. You can also find this in the top toolbars. In addition to dimensions, you can also constrain a, a sketch geometrically. To add geometric constraints, you can either click the icon or go to Insert Constraints. When selecting an entity, the list of geometric constraints that are available for that entity will be shown. For example, fixed, horizontal, vertical, constant length, and constant angle are shown when selecting a line. Fixed will anchor the line in space and remove two degrees of freedom. Horizontal and vertical will make the line parallel to the x and y axes respectively, and each will remove one degree of freedom. Constant length fixes the length of the line and removes one degree of freedom. Constant angle fixes the angle of the line with respect to the x-axis and also removes one degree of freedom. Note that the options available change whether you select a line or its endpoint. If you select more than one object, a list of constraints is shown that can constrain the objects in relation to one another. In many cases, it is helpful to have one object defined first and then set a constraint of the second object based on the first. For example, you may set the length of a line, then select a second line, and constrain it to be of equal length. When selecting two arcs, you have the options to make the arcs concentric, tangent, or of equal radius. If more than two arcs are selected, the tangent constraint will no longer be available. You may constrain two lines to be collinear, parallel, or perpendicular in addition to the options available when selecting only one line. A line and an arc can also be selected and constrained tangent to each other. The order in which you apply constraints is also important. 
For example, if you wish to extend a line to be tangent to an arc, you must choose the tangent option before you choose to constrain the line's endpoint to be coincident with a point on the circle. If you constrain the coincident point first, the curve or line will be moved rather than extended. One important degree of freedom that is often overlooked is anchoring the sketch. The entire sketch must be anchored in 3D space by specifying a datum axis or an existing entity outside of the sketch from which the sketch location can be defined in relation to. Anchoring the sketch removes two degrees of freedom. The third degree of freedom is specified by initial choice of the sketch plane. Finally, it is possible that constraints may conflict with one another. When this happens, the symbols for the conflicting constraints will change color from blue to orange, and the top status bar will notify you that the sketch constain contains over-constrained geometries. Also, if an ambiguous constraint is added, the color will change to salmon. You can remove one of these constraints by using the Show Remove Constraints option or by simply deleting dimensional constraints.